Hey everybody, I'm Tammy Harrison and welcome, welcome, welcome to Mix Cocktail Hour coming to you live from a place that I call Awesome Town in Los Angeles, California. We have a fantastic show planned for you guys today and we have a very special guest as well. So without further ado, I would like to introduce a superstar mixologist and our friend, D. Max Maxi! Hey, peoples. It's Hello. been too long. It really has. But I like this. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's a nostalgia. This is it's like a visiting my dad. It's a spit guard. <laughs> okay. We're, we're very careful here. We're yes. very careful here on set. Yes. How, I'm wearing galoshes. You are? Yeah. Um, I'm wearing <laughs> rain boots. <laughs> Not right? Waders up to your hips. Exactly. Just to be careful. Exactly. Um, so for everybody at home, of course, we have our chat open here. So please ask us questions, write us your comments, subscribe, uh, like, and um, also our TikTok viewers hop on over to YouTube live so you can join in as well. Yeah, why not? So last time we saw each other, this was... Mm -hmm. M there was much. drinking involved. If I there remember. was a lot of drinking yeah. involved. Very, very great drinks. And I was tiki drinks, and it was much. It was tiki drinks. It was the beginning of the end of 2020, kind of, God. right? But alcohol. The end got of us 2020. Through. It sounds beautiful. The alcohol <laughs> got us through. Yeah. Fun fact. Mm -hmm. Today mm -hmm. is go on National Bartender Day. Is that true? I would have thought from all people you would know that. You would think so, right? Uh, yeah. Well, guess what? I haven't paid my dues, so... It's, it's just National not Bartender Day. So, I thought... I know you love rum. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know I, love I, I made us a little... What'd you get, make? Let's get the party started. Shot. Sweet. This is called The Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I like it. Yeah. Um, rum, vodka, um, we've got cranberry in here, and grapefruit. I mean... Dude, put it in a dream house and let's go. That's, that's, exactly. Cheers. The National Bartender Day. Barbie did not last long. It did not. So, um, we're not gonna be making tiki drinks today, obviously. We are definitely I mean, not we making are, tiki I'm drinks I'm excited there. too. Um, quick shout out to JM Garcia. Tex is here. What's up, everyone? Yo, Sterling Tex. J. Tex is my brother. He's tuned in. It's like 2 a.m. in Austria right now. And really? Yeah. He's tuned in. Your brother loves you. I love my brother. Uh, either that or he's just usually up at 2 a.m. I don't know. He could have been partying, which I doubt, but um, he's here for us. That's why, that's why he's here. I'm sure he'll... Oh, Deirdre's here Thank as well. Thank you, Tex. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. So uh, I say... What are you drinking? Nothing. Oh, don't worry. I've got... It might be a spiked Coke. It might not. You don't know. I have spiked Red Bull. Which is the best Red Bull. Best Red Bull? <laughs> the best Red Bull is spiked. What are we going to be making today? Well, I thought we'd focus on some tequilas today. Ooh. Just because, you know, I mean, we've done rum drinks and I, yeah. you know, I mean, just judging by the hat, you know, yeah. I love American whiskeys and that sort of thing. Mm. So, uh, but I don't think we've done a lot of tequila. We haven't. I haven't. And I, even on the show we haven't. And yeah. I really thought that's time to kind of fix that. So yes. I thought we'd start off with just a simple margarita. A little bit. Because I always feel like sometimes that we as bartenders, we're always guilty of, oh, what's new, let's yeah. go over the top, let's make a bubble and smoke the thing and yeah. then drop it from you know, the, the story and you yeah. catch it down here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, sometimes it really is just the simplicity the of it that is beautiful. Less is more. Yeah, and I want to be able to taste, I like my ingredients where I can taste my spirit coming through. Yeah. You know, I don't want to hide it too much. So yeah. I thought we'd do just a simple margarita. Cool. And the thing with it I love, and this is just simply my margarita. Okay. Because every bartender always has, you know, this is the uh, margarita recipe. Is you there got the, a classic? The Tommy, the Frozen, yeah, the, you yeah. know, all these different things. And yeah. the thing is that this is such a classic recipe because it's, Basically, it's stolen from a daisy, which is stolen from a sour. So you've got all the, this classic pattern that you can make, and almost anything you do within that pattern is going to be good. Yeah. You almost can't fuck up a margarita. Awesome. Right? I so mean, we're going to do it two different ways. I'm going to do mine. Yeah. You're going to do mine exactly the same way, but with mezcal. Ooh, so I'm going to get the smoky We We smoky crazy margarita. here. Yep. So. I'm ready. We'll start with that. And we're going to start with... Am I mixing at the same time as you, or what's happening here? Uh, yeah, you got that mezcal? No. You do now. 
Do I need tins or something? Huh, should have planned that out. Well, okay, so I'm making a margarita. All right, I'll just drink the I'm using Fortaleza. I'll just so take we're gonna shots do, of this guy. Right? No, well, that's fine. We can always, if we have time, we can still always make this one. Or right. we can just say, once you, like, if you don't want that, swap it out with this guy. Yeah. Because it's yeah. the same thing, right? Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna taste it, yeah. and then we'll put the glass down, yeah. and then they won't be able to tell, yeah. and I'll prick it back up and go, look, let's go. I don't know, our audience is very smart. <laughs> our audience is very smart. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Fortaleza. Love this family, love this spirit. Uh, we're doing a Reposado, just gives a little bit more, a little more character to the drink. You don't have to, you use what you like. I like a Reposado. Where's it from? Uh, they make it in Mexico. Well, yeah, but like... <laughs> Max, way up. And that's why Mexico's they asked me back. Big. Mexico's big, you know. <laughs> Is it actually from tequila? From tequila, yeah, from Jalisco. Okay, yeah. fine. Uh, Just double checking. I know, right? Uh, one of the things I love about this, this yeah. was, I don't know if you know much about the family, but they did this, his great, great grandfather had started this. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really, really cool. And they had actually, uh, had been doing this forever, had sold it, and uh, the, oh, well, now I'm mixing it up in my story with the Sieta Leguas. But the, uh, the Fortaleza was, mm. is still made with the uh, Tejon, you know, so crushed, and still done uh, in the way that his great great grandfather had done. That's cool. Which is really yeah, yeah. it's amazing. He yeah. apparently when they had sold the uh, distillery to Sousa, uh -huh. they had kept uh, the original distillery, which they had made into a, a uh, into a museum. museum? So That's they hadn't cool. used it at all. Yeah. And then after a certain amount of time, they went, let's just start this again and yeah. do our own. And so they really are doing it not only the way great grandfather did it but in the same place. See, and that's, that yeah, just goes to show stuff. he already started doing it so awesome, mm -hmm. like 100 years ago, or 150 probably. Right. And that's how good it is. You don't have to even change how it's how it's made. I love that. And what a great business to get into, that family business, can you imagine? Right. Yeah. I mean, we would be raging alcoholics. Well, there. that's, I wouldn't be that's actually work. part of the story, is that he originally had thought that he was going to inherit it. Oh. And his uh, his grandfather sold it without really telling much of the family, oh. and it was like we're out. And so they had, they were still uh, harvesting because he still had the farm. Mm. And the, their agave is known to be particularly sweet yeah. and and great agave. So uh, when they got back in, they had everything there. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. So well, I hope it tastes good now. Great. Right? Great pre-story. They won't be able to tell. It's going to be great. I will. <laughs> All I'll right, tell fine, you. then we'll do it right. Uh, so on my recipe, what I'm doing, and like every bartender, yes. I have totally stolen from every bartender I love that made the made a drink also. Dave actually asked, what, oh, was it El Dorado 21-year-old rum? What is this, this is, Dave, I don't know, Dave, but I hear it's 21 you. years we old. We love you long time. <laughs> this is tequila, honey. <laughs> rum was last week. Pay attention, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Q Moonwalker and uh, Jay Sloan is in here, of course. Danny's in here as well. Mwah, mwah, mwah. So, so what did you put in there now? What's in so there? So we did uh, two ounces tequila. Yep. One lime. Yep. Now, and that's a little bit higher than some. Some do three quarter, but I really like it citrusy. Yeah, me too. And then uh, a play on the Tommy Margarita. It is. Uh, they do a half ounce of Cointreau and a half ounce of agave, mm -hmm. and I do a three-quarter split of them both. So it's a little less sweet. I really want it to kind of pop oh, okay. up. Okay, all right. Now comes the shake. Gentle shake. train because I remember years ago when we did an episode for yeah. our TV show mix right you did the slow train coming out of the station thing. But you said you do that because you busted your shoulder yeah you kind of kept is that your thing now uh, you I've still move. busted my shoulder still bu okay. yeah it's, it's still, <laughs> still nothing busted. has changed there. okay fair enough <laughs> You know, honestly, it's uh, I have a very unusual shake because most people, most uh, good noticed. bartenders will do more of a this sort yeah. of thing. Uh, 
old bartenders ca- you know have old? to constantly, yeah, okay, no. uh, have to constantly adapt because the shoulder's bad, then it's oh. the back, then it's the knee. Then... See, that's why I use my shoulders. I just do up and down, up and down. Uh, you used your shoulders. Well, not my, I just not saw like, you, you, whoa, 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 you look, do this Can motion. you see the shoulders? You do Because it's like she's going you like that. This. You can see that muscle ripple. I just ripple. like move it a little bit. See, I'm I sorry, just one more time. Arm. Li- just like a this. Bit. Yeah. Okay, we can yeah. do that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so Carry another on. one of the things that is very, Ooh, that very mean. Great. I know, Love right? It. I've done this before. I practiced before I got here. <laughs> um, is you're normally going to clean up all that garbage ice that's broken okay. before you do it. Except with the margarita, I love the little icy yeah. you know, chili bits. Yeah. And then a little, a little pinch of salt on top. Okay. Oh, out comes a knife. Ha, hands up. Yep, watch out. Watch out. And this one doesn't need any salt or anything, right? Because you put the salt in it. I do the salt the... in it. Yeah, I like I, it. I always That's feel great. like if you, like it needs a little bit. Yeah. But if you do the whole rim, I find it gets overly salty and this is the way I like it. That's exactly, sometimes, you know, at a, thank you, um, at a bar, I can't, I want the salt, but you totally. know how they, they rim the thing that you've got like the, the crusty mouth afterwards and all you taste is salt. Mm-hmm. And they can't do the d- sprinkle. So I like this sprinkle. Put your face in it, see. It smells delicious. I know. Cheers, everybody. So I really feel like part of the, and again, I'm being silly and playful because I'm a bartender, but mm. uh, you know, you do take the drink seriously. So part of the mm. expressing mm. of the oils with the lime, uh, doing that peel that way instead of just dropping a wheel, yeah, it, that's what's affecting your nose. Absolutely. So it feels like, oh, I'm getting right into a lime. Absolutely. And that little hint of salt as well makes such a difference. It and does, you're right. right. I like it better with a little bit more lime. That, mm. that citrusy taste I that comes I think so too out, for me. It's, it's way more refreshing, I find. And the thing also, Delicious. guys, if you're making these at home or doing mm. other drinks, you can use a saline solution, mm. which is just going to be salt and water. And that's beautiful too. But I find that, like I feel about my old fashions, it's a bit refined. Mm. So if I want something that's just kind of nice and I, I don't want it to stand out too much, yeah. the saline solution's great. Yeah. But by doing the, the pinch of salt on it, it's, it's rougher. It's not smooth. And I saline, think for this drink, it adds, adds to it. I think I, I, would, I might possibly overdo it with the saline solution. With salt, you can kind of measure a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, totally, yeah. I mean, that's just me, but this is fantastic. Mm. Oh, ice cream, sorry. Uh-huh. J.M. Garcia says he is from Mexico. So cheers. Yo, bud. He probably, he probably knows him. Oh yeah, we, probably, we go way back. They're probably buds. Yeah. <laughs> they know so, each other. Yum, yum. Cheers, cheers Drink for that. this. Cheers everybody at home. And um, yeah, we have time. We can always make yeah. a mezcal one uh, later on. Uh, oh, you some? wanna have some? I kinda do, yeah. <sighs> well, don't drink all of it then. Yeah, yeah, no, so we've been wearing masks before we got here. Been wearing masks while we do we're getting we set get, up. We get tested. We've got plastic. We've got the test, and now I'm sharing the same glass. So what yeah. the fuck was that for? Well, that we but can damn, show that's good. that we can <laughs> show our concerned viewers that we are still safe and uh, you know uh, abiding waiters. by the guidelines. <laughs> yes, we are. Anyway, whether, whether you like it or not, abide. Um, I say let's move on to drink numero dos. Let's do it. And see what that's all about. Well, if we got time, we're gonna do that mezcal drink too. Hey, don't threaten me with good not, time. Not because it's important, just because I wanted to drink. Don't threaten me with good time. <laughs> right? Okay. What are we doing now? What's we're this? gonna do a drink called the Tequila Sunrise. Oh. So okay. the idea behind this one is that there are so many great, especially I think tequila drinks, yeah. that kind of get lost because maybe they weren't made well or you overdid it in college or whatever the reason is, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Tequila Sunrise is one of those drinks that has a great story to it because it has, well, we're not exactly sure on the history. We're in tequila and we're watching the sunrise. Right, there you go. That's it. Well, but most people know the tequila, orange juice, yeah. grenadine. Yeah, yeah. And the original wasn't anything like that. Now the story oh. behind it was that it was supposed to be done in the, some say the 30s, some say it was invented in Arizona, uh, you know, there's all these different things, uh-huh. but... What do you think the story is, the real story? I think it doesn't matter. 
good, I good story. Th I think that you know no all these stories were involved with drinking. True. You were drunk when you heard it the first time. Yeah. Nobody remembers it exactly. Most so. cocktails are made when you're completely hammered. Right. And then you can't even remember how you made it anyway. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so no I, one knows the real stories. It, most of this ends up being a little vague on facts. Yeah. But I feel like that uh, makes it very timely. I say the story is <laughs> hanging out in tequila, mm -hmm. drinking some tequila, watching the sunrise because you've been partying all night long. Oh. And what do you have in your in your yard? Do you got orange trees? Uh -huh. We've got some pomegranates. Just really laying around. And do you still have any tequila? And we still got little leftover tequila. Like, I, I oh, think we've we got a drink. Do? Yeah. Smash that together. So here we go. here's the thing with this one. This is my favorite story. Okay. That I and this is the one that I subscribe to. Okay. Uh, is that it was invented during Prohibition in Tijuana in Mexico. Okay. You had uh, Americans that were escaping prohibition going down to Tijuana where they could drink. Mm -hmm. A lot of times at dog races and that sort of thing that were popular down there. Uh, so this drink has tequila, yeah. fresh squeezed lime juice, pomegranate syrup, creme de cassis, a little soda. Hmm. It's a light, refreshing Collins. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. But the, the as the story goes, that once all the prohibition was over, mm -hmm. you had new bartenders now coming in. They were still learning the craft because it's been prohibition for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And Americans that were drunk in Mexico going, dude, I don't know, it was kind of red and had tequila in it. So, you know. True. So I think it kind of changed. But again, we don't know if those are the facts. Some people believe other stuff. Some but people might believe my story now. There, we don't know. It may be total bullshit, but I kind of like that one. We don't know. So that's what I'm going with. I love it. Right? Exactly. Okay, so let's do it. So we're gonna go. Oh. What's this? Siete leguas. Obviously, that's tequila, but yeah. Siete. Siete leguas. So leguas. Uh, seven okay. leagues. It was Pancho Villa's horse mm -hmm. uh, that it's named after, mm -hmm. and the um, this one was actually the people who used to make uh, for Patron. So oh. if you were a fan of Patron okay. from when it started in eighty. I'm gonna say 88. Six? Okay. Yeah, something like uh, that. Yeah. Uh, until 2002, mm -hmm. these were the guys making it. And then the company then split because they just, they didn't want to change how they did it. They did it the old way with the old ovens that would take 36 hours to cook the agave and then use that big tajon peel, uh, uh, pulled by the mules. Wow. And they now- They still do that like that They today? still do it. And that's why they that's couldn't keep awesome. up with, Patron become so successful, yeah. they just couldn't keep up with it. So they ended up splitting at that point. Mm -hmm. So. We're gonna do. Good for them though. I know, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do an ounce and a half. See, Betty Bell says, I want a screwdriver, so shout out to Betty Bell. <laughs> we're gonna do. What's this? Splash of soda. Okay. I like to do the soda in ahead of time. I was gonna say, doesn't is that normally the last ingredient that goes into cocktails? It normally is, yeah. but don't you want the bubbles to effervesce through? I don't know. Do I? You do. I, uh, yes. Yeah. Then you don't want to yes. put them on top, and they just bubble away. Gotcha. That's silly. Okay. Okay. So let's get half ounce palm. I know that cassis is around here. Mm. Do you see what I did with that lime juice? I did not because I was too busy secretly sipping on this margarita. <laughs> Don't be shy with it, okay? Oh, We're gonna do three oh, quarter ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice. Okay. And on this one, we're gonna do more of a light whip. Now, you just chilling technically, the when you say whip, you usually mean that you're going to uh, just use one cube and just or a dry. Oh. Uh, I just simply meant I'm going to do it a lot lighter, not shake as hard. But why are the ice cubes in the glass? Are you just chilling the glass down, or what are you doing? Uh, no, I want them in there to make it cold. I'm going to pour over it, and that way it picks up the ice and lets lets it effervesce. If I do it oh. afterwards and it splashes, no one wants a mess like that. It is wine for a reason. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, we're usually, okay. there's a lot of rules and a lot of different styles of making stuff. No, I love it um, you do things weird. I do. 
But, but it again, might not, that might be the it's right no, way. All, no, know all the reasons why you're doing things, and then you can choose the ones that you think are going to be best for you and the best quality. But that's the way I like to do mine. There's no wrong way to make a cocktail. Uh, there is, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, like I'll just feet? keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just like that's talking. wrong. <laughs> and we're gonna do a little more. There you go. Oh, so we got soda at the bottom and at the top. Surprises at the top and the bottom. Well, I didn't want to overload, and I didn't. I'm not familiar with this glassware, honestly. So the tequila sunrise would have orange juice in it, right? This has lime in it. Uh, this is the original recipe. Ah. So, but yeah, so you almost have to say I want a, a 70s tequila sunrise or a traditional tequila sunrise. Gotcha. Splashing that a little bit. All right, so we're gonna be drinking with our noses. Mm-hmm. Two straws, you first. I wanna be red. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Cheers. Refreshing, right? It. Oh, they, they want one. That's, that, that's my <laughs> thoughts. We're a car alarm. The line is building. Mm. Why does this taste a little bit smoky? Is this this has a little bit like a? Well, there's a state more it, the cassis and the, or uh, am the I just pomegranate. Going weird? Did, no, they're, they're sweet, but there is like a little bit of savory because I'm not over sugaring mm. it. This is so different. To, to your margarita. Mm -hmm. I, I really like it, but it reminds me so much of a, uh, yeah, it tastes a little mezcal to me. Mm -hmm. It's definitely drier. That's what it is. It's the it's dryness, drier. because I, do, I don't tend to like a lot of sugar in my drinks. Mm -hmm. So, and again, you know, if, if you're you're making for friends or, oh God, we're in a bar. Uh, you could always God. add more sugar if you want. Uh, I, if I'm going to err at all, I'm going to go on less sugar. That's just my palate anyways. Mm. If I find that, you, you know, that. you want it this way, I'll make it the way you want it, but. This is more of a, like a sipper for me. Mm -hmm. The margarita, I could slam 20. Right. So that's, but see, I think this that's also the feels very is... daytime by the pool. Yes. Yeah. Even though the margarita is also like a daytime at the beach. But this one's easier to, to. To slam. Slam. This is dry. It's drier. Yeah. yeah. And, and personally, Which is good. I like that. You can that. enjoy it longer. But if you, if you, I don't want too much sugar. I want something yeah. kind of dry and tart and that kind of thing. Yeah. That's the drink for you. Yeah. Yeah. The I original like tequila it. sunrise. You should do I it. I think it's, I think it's yummy. I, I'm just amazed just by it's a couple delicious. of ingredients how these two are so completely. Well, and uh, that's the thing is that bartending is always about different. we, we're edging over, you know, it's, it's exactly like this drink, mm. but instead we did that. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. You know, it, it's kind of funny because bartenders, we do tend to sometimes get a little full of ourselves. Yeah. We're just really a little bit. You, think? you didn't notice with the hat? Okay. But the thing I is that you <laughs> you do. Uh, we're just building on what people have done before, and you know, you want to load yourself up with as much knowledge so that you're versatile. But really, we're just we're not reinventing anything. No. Yeah. It's, Even though you, know, you have shown me a couple of things which are new, which is the, true, salt, the salt sprinkling. But, but I stole those from other people, you, right? You just, and we all do. And so then steal. it's like, which tools are best? You didn't steal. Um, you oh, just, it's not no, what my PO called, said. No, it's called borrowing. <laughs> it's called borrowing forever. Mm, that's what it is. Yeah. I like that. No. Probably an Austrian thing, right? It is not. It is just a general universal world mm. thing. Okay. Okay. So, oh, Deidre asked a great question. What, What's up, Deidre? What brings in the dryness? Oh, uh, the club soda and the fact that I'm using less sugar than most recipes call for. Oh. Yeah, because I've only yeah. used a half ounce of a pomegranate and a half ounce of that cassis. And so you're bringing up big fruit flavors in that syrup. Mm. Uh, you know, all that berry that goes great with the lime. But I'm I'm not sweetening in more. And again, if you if you don't like it as dry, put more syrup in there. Yeah, put some sugar syrup. Yeah. I just like that dryness for that. Yeah. Um, you know, and, which is funny because I think that uh, you know what's becoming real popular right now, like the white claw stuff. Yeah. Those are very dry, mm -hmm. essentially vodka sodas. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you've got the, you know, because they, you know, they kind of advertise on, you know, low sugar, no sugar sort yeah, of thing. Exactly. So th if you like that kind of dryness, mm -hmm. this is in that sort of wheelhouse, mm -hmm. but fresh made and made to your order. Yeah, I don't think there are any of those canned tequila drinks, are there? Yeah, there are. Yeah. Oh, there's me there's again. Canned mar Dude, there's I'm canned everything now, anymore. right? Yeah, I don't but know. I have well, seen canned margaritas. Because I've I drank, you know, the White Claws and the Trulies and the sure, truly all the all the, those ones. But I don't think I've seen the ones with the with the ticket. But then I just maybe haven't looked. So well, I don't think any of those. Me. I think there you, there are some brands that do canned cocktails. So I've oh, seen okay. canned old fashions, oh, canned oh, margaritas. Oh yeah, I've seen those. Okay. Yeah, so that's those a little bit different. Okay. Yeah, and their that's sugar levels are going to be different. I don't know. Uh, I mean, if the, nothing can be better than I haven't been, it. Honestly, I haven't been moved to try it. No. So I, Don't. I couldn't tell you one way or the other. Don't. So let's do... Betty Baum says, we are all alcoholics. That is completely true. <laughs> that is very much true. Yes. Please keep adding because yes. that is the truth. <laughs> uh, did I give you my two ounce jigger? You, if this is it, then yes. I thought so. Mm, fine. Well, okay. I was going to make the mezcal cocktail, but we didn't get around to doing that, so... Uh, you know, I think we're going to have time. We're going to do it too. Sure. Right? So, uh. Just keep going. Yeah. So, uh, this one is, and again, I just wanted to kind of show the versatility of tequila because I think okay. too often it, people don't appreciate it. And, and too often you have either the aficionados who just want to drink it neat. Yeah. Uh, or, or shoot it. Or, or something, right. You know, or you, or you got the shots and that yeah. kind of stuff. And yeah. it, it, but there is a lot of versatility. So on this one, this is one of my originals. And the idea was... Oh, this is one of yours? Yeah. And so the, right. the idea, and again, I wanted to be, let's go back to I'm the basics. I'm going to extra let's critical. Not I expect nothing less. Okay, good. So. Fair enough. So, <laughs> so basically, up. we're just making a martini here. Okay. Guys, all right. Yuck. I uh, know, right? Already starting off crap. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Sorry, Joke. I gotta go. Joke. We I'm back. You. And I brought tequila. So uh, instead of a so wait vermouth, in a martini, isn't that gin normally? What, is it how is yes. this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, totally. Uh, but the pattern for it is uh, at least more commonly now. Yeah. Uh, two to one. Yeah. Now, there can be a lot of deference. A lot of people, martini people, are five to one or don't use any dry vermouth at all. But old recipe, I'm kind of going back a little bit. So this is the two to one version. And instead of dry vermouth, I'm using Coke Americano. I love this stuff. What is this stuff? Uh, it's Give me a glass. Okay, wait. So there's a little bit of a quinine bite in there. Which it smells I, like wine. Mm-hmm. It's a fortified wine. But it's, it's, it uh, smells a lot sweeter. Mm-hmm. Fortified wine. Yeah, this tastes like grape apple juice. It's a great one for a, uh, a classic corpse reviver. I could imagine this just being great with ice, like that cold. Totally. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of these were originally produced to be aperitifs. Mm -hmm. You know, driver, you know, in, in Italy, Wait, you're aperitif. drinking your sweet vermouth neat. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Or maybe you're doing the Americano, which, you know, is sweet vermouth and Campari and a little soda. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, we're going to do a blend of bitters. Okay. So, dash grapefruit, dash ango, uh -huh. dash ango oh. orange. All right, okay. Crazy. Getting crazy up in here. But this isn't gonna, is this gonna be one? No, I'm not even gonna ask any questions anymore. You, no? just, you do you. I've been doing me. You do, to carry on doing you. Oh, haha, -ha. see, this time, exactly. Anyone who's watched our mix uh, sh television show. No, I need a new cube. Max had an ice cube. The size, the size that like sank the Titanic, <laughs> and started hacking we at have it just turned with around, no warning didn't. whatsoever. And I was about half a foot from your face. Mm -hmm. That was fun, fun. With with no plastic covering. Good times. <laughs> Good times. At least we got the plexiglass in here this time. Oh, so the other two you don't taste, but your own one you do, huh? Uh, a martini always is going to be very particular okay. because it is, it's all booze, right? Yeah. So I find that 
I don't want to over stir and get it kind of flabby. Okay. It's watery. You don't want to under stir it. Okay. So this one is, I will constantly with a martini. Ooh, that's good. Uh, stir till I get it just right, and you kind of just taste as you go. That's the only way to really do it. And you'll stir, what, coolness, or what do you wait, dilution a little bit? What do you, because you it's said gonna I'll cool stir down. until I get it right. It, it's dilution. dilution. It's dilution basically that you're looking for. Okay, do you need a... Uh, but uh, like I said, you don't want it to be over diluted or under diluted, so you're just simply tasting as you go. Okay. Here we go. Could you drink this dirty? You can be as dirty as you want. I know, but, all right, let me rephrase. Yeah, go ahead. Could you drink it with a little bit of olive juice? I wouldn't. Okay. Just checking. Not that I'm trying. Obviously, this is not, not the that tool I'm trying to improve I'm your drink. I'm just asking what the variations are. What's going on? Oh, I just you're the. It's not a tool I'm used to, so I didn't know the size was wrong. This is called a julep strainer. Oh yeah? <laughs> no way. <Yeah. laughs> That's pretty sweet. In case you didn't know. <laughs> What did you name it? El Rosa. El Rosa? Yeah, because it has a little Tell bit... Tell me that's your... From the angle... Grandma. From the Angostura, it has a little bit of a rose color. Oh, okay. Depending on how much you're using. I thought you were going to give me some story about my grandma was called Rosa. My grandmother was named Rosa. There we go. She drank a lot of tequila mm -hmm. and you. made homemade tortillas. <gasps> And to They're this the day, I, had them in I get Diego. homemade tortillas oh. and tequila, and I'm just home. It's crazy. Have you had ho uh, homemade um, tortillas? Yeah. Oh. My mom did. My grandmother did that every meal. I don't know if you're making this up now or not. It's really hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty typical of bartenders, honestly. Yeah. Usually the actors. Oh, thank you. I don't choose to do a garnish on this one, but I do the, why, uh, why? the grapefruit oils. Less is more, right? Yeah, let's, well, let's see. Cheers. It smells great. Mm hmm Let's see how it tastes. Ooh, the drama. Hmm. The thing with the good martini is it should oh, taste classic. No, it is great. No, I was joking. I was going to go, Ugh. I know. Ugh. No, you this know, is... A good martini you know should I, make you feel underdressed. I prefer this to a, a gin martini. Really? Absolutely. It's somehow... You heard it here, folks. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why. Tell me why. No clue. <laughs> Whatsoever. It's just better. Now, before the four better. drinks we've already had, do you Clearly. think you would have been able to tell why then? Repeat the question, please. <laughs> I think it's the drinks. The I can't question, describe please. it either. Um, no, I, yeah, I, um, I think because... No, don't know. No, no, it, it just tastes better. I can't tell you why. I think I it's because of the liquid in my mouth. No, maybe it's because... It's hitting the hot hair no, and the hair, it and might, it's making me happy. Because it's not juniper-ish. Mm -hmm, okay. If that's even a word. It, yeah. It's, it's not juniper-ish. Got it. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know? In any it's, bar across America, like after 10.30, that's a word. Juniper, it's a word right now. <laughs> I, I believe it's, I've heard it somewhere. Juniper-ish. That is a fact, people. Yes. Um, but I've got to give it to you. Um, well done. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said. I don't know I'm acting surprised. It's like, it's your job. You can make <laughs> right? great drinks. You don't do anything else. You, this is, you're, supposed to be, you're supposed to be good at this stuff. I'm like, wow. It's what, all you what do. What have done? You've been doing it for 20 years, dude. No. Uh, if you're not good by now. No, I've got to say. I'm sorry. You definitely, and you're right, olive juice would mess it up. And maybe that's why. Well, it's the saltiness that you're adding. And it's just not, it, this drink is just not designed to accommodate that. It's sweeter. Yeah. And sure. not as dry. Right. And I think that that's might be the, why my taste buds like it. That's the cookie. That's what it is. Americano. Uh, but the quinine does give it a little bit of a bite, mm -hmm. which plays in well with the grapefruit. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well yeah. done. La so, Rosa. Let's do. Was it oh, El Rosa? Hey, you had that La in the skull, right? El. El Rosa. Yeah. I did. Here. Yeah. Translated loosely, it means the Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> God, if this thing had a soundtrack, we'd be killing it. Danny says we're killing it. Or you should say laugh track. Thank you. 
Danny, Danny Vasquez says we are killing it right really? now. Really? Thanks, Dan. Why do you sound so surprised? I didn't know what to expect. You're just being you and people are entertained. You know, this is the... I just rolled out of bed and showed up and was like, dude, I don't know, I'm making drinks. Yeah. I'm trying to read some more comments here. We've got a lot of thumbs up. A yeah, lot, a lot of, of Christmas thumbs? trees, too. Which is great. We're only, what, a couple weeks away? Yeah, okay. I'll take Christmas trees. Love Christmas. Do you have your Christmas tree up already? I got a two-year-old at home. It wasn't a choice. This is like the is first yes Christmas tree no? I've had up in ever. It's a yes. Oh, okay. It is an emphatic yes to Christmas trees decorated with tow trucks. Oh, My really? kid loves trucks. Oh. I can't do anything about it. That's great, though. No, I'm kind of stoked, honestly. Trucks are cool. Dude, when you two. On, on trash truck day, we stalk that mother. We, we go out, we wave at the truck guy, we do the little honk honk, we walk down the cul-de-sac, oh, so we follow him around everything? the block. Aww. The guy can't get rid of us. Do you film that? You gotta film it, they're cool memories. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, that's so sweet. I've seen videos where, where um, they even like, then take him on a little ride and stuff. And yeah. like, it's, it's very, very sweet. Yeah, Christmas is great. I put my Christmas tree up three days before Thanksgiving. Did you really? I did. Is it a real tree though? Is it alive? Or had it been live? It it is a very real looking tree. I've got nothing wrong with that, man. Because I don't want to have to, you know, sweep up pine needles well, for the well, next six months. It does actually needle too, which is slightly annoying. Because then I could have actually gotten the real one. But you've got um, an artificial tree yeah, that has real pine needles. It's very hip. Apparently, that's how you do it nowadays. You get yeah. a tree that kind of needles a little bit to get you the experience yeah. of having a real tree. But yeah. That's that's how Pay $500, still have a mess to clean up. Exactly. But you're saving the trees. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, I'll right, buy I'll that one. i put this one down here. So we're making the mezcal one, right? We're making the Wait, mezcal recap. one. recap. What did you put in there? I could tell you. It's not for me. It's okay. for our beautiful oh, viewers. I'll tell you. Exactly. Uh, so the same thing. Uh, two to one on... And again, I like to go up on the citrus. So it's the two, uh, two of spirit, which is the mezcal in this one. Uh, actually, a great brand. Would you hold that up? Actually, they're doing it with a the Tahone and doing it the old style too. It's a really nice product. Not one I was really familiar with, but really good. Uh, so we're doing that, and then just the same recipe, which I think you see printed below. I don't know if that's actually below. I don't know if that's uh, below. It's, <laughs> it's oh, maybe. so it's two, one lime, and then uh, doing that split of three quarter, you know, split with the Cointreau and the agave in that same three quarter ounce. How do you pronounce it? Hikaru. Agave. No, this. Oh. The name of it. Silver. Rubbish. <laughs> it's an X I C A R U. Yeah. I would say Sikaru. Okay. Cool. Is that how you say it? Well, because he has his story on here. Using my grandmother's recipe, Sikaru silver is produced in, a, in small batches with traditional methods. Our secret for producing a natural smoky flavor yes. is to cook the agave with mesquite and ocote? O-C-O-T-E? Yeah, it's another kind of wood, but I'm not familiar with that one. Ocote? So a, a, lot of, a lot of them will actually... native to Oaxaca. Oaxaca? I'm proud to share my family's mezcal with you. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's nice. You got it's a little backstory on well, the bottle. That's cool. That's what I love about uh, mezcals. Yeah. Is it with? So the beauty of tequila is there's so much regulation that there's it's going to be made in a certain area. Yeah. Has to be 100% blue agave. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a lot of rules and regulations for with it. mezcal. With being from Oaxaca is the same though. Me, no. No. Mezcal that can be made anywhere in Mexico. I think there's yeah. I think pretty much anywhere. Oh, I thought uh, it was with, with a different kind. No, with from a bit, different kind of agaves. You can you do you want to roast them under the ground and use mesquite? Do you yeah. want to do them in an oven and not have that? Yeah. So you it, it's a lot more individual, you know. Huh. So it, it being his grandmother's recipe mm. is actually more of a big thing because his grandmother probably didn't make it with like the guy down the street. Gotcha. You know, it's everybody has their favorite. Yeah. So it's part of what makes mezcal kind of cool. Ah. How about a glass? Which do we have rocks? one randomly to maybe you clean? I have a. You don't want a rocks glass. You want a Collins glass. That, no, I have no a rocks glass. glass. Give, give me that bucket. This guy. That's the one. Alright. So, uh, so doing it the same Lopez. way with dumping oh. everything in there because I want those little icy blits so it almost tastes like a blended. Love 
of it. Louis Lopez says, Max is my favorite bartender. Glad to see him on this live feed. Love his style. Check out his rings. Who is it? Louis Lopez. Oh, it's my cousin, Louis. Oh, hey! Let's say hi to mom. Family tuned in, see? <laughs> we all got the family tuned in here. And uh, little Tom is here. Aubrey. Tiny Tom. Okay, so the same thing, sprinkle the salt. Spring thing, sprinkle the salt. Get out the knife. Should just leave it open. No, it's cooler to you you sling it out like a like a gun. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then a little knife put play that doesn't holster. get me in trouble anymore. Okay, now. Okay. You mm. for our viewing audience. Yes. Put your face in it. Gracias. That nose is great, mm. right? Yeah. Okay. Lime wheels on a margarita make me mad. They should be candles. Right? Like this. Yeah. So good. It comes with a shot of tequila on the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Yeah. That's my little happy dance. Do it. I like it. I am. This is it. This oh, that's is, the whole. This is as far as it goes. Yeah. I expected you to be happy. No, this is, hmm, I wouldn't know which one I prefer. They're if you both like good, the and that's smoky, the sort of barbecue-y, smoky, mezcal There's a savoriness flavor, to it, right? Absolutely, because I remember, you have to get used to it. It's, a kind, it's, it's an acquired taste, I find, mezcal. Do you think so? I do, because I think the first time I ever tried mezcal was six years ago. Okay. And I remember thinking, what the? Is this? How did you that try? That was it? literally in in a in a uh, it was a, it was a margarita. Okay. And I remember thinking that I don't know what that is. It, t it tastes like I'm eating uh, barbecued ribs in a drink. So do but you then, feel that it was that you've acclimated, or did you feel that maybe it wasn't the best uh, I had just agave never, at the same at that point? I don't I don't I don't know. I think it was because I'd never had a cocktail that that, that tasted smoky. So that it totally was, was a different world that exactly. you're getting into. For me, it was yeah. sweet. You know, I was yeah. drinking Cosmos and totally. You know, Sex and there's the nothing wrong with those. Then, so we, we get so snobby about that stuff. And, so if I'm used to like the the cranberry juice, the the real sweet sort of cocktails, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you get something smoky, my taste buds were were thrown off. And, I, and um, but the the random thing is, throughout the years now, especially doing mix and tasting so many different mezcal drinks. Right. Um, Bartenders love mezcal. It's it's actually great. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. One of my favorites is, is a it's mezcal savory, mule. It's savory, isn't it? I love mezcal mules. Oh, right I love now. the mule. Yeah. Right? Aren't they fantastic? But see, that that mule is another drink that, like the margarita, is mm. you can make it with almost, God, almost any spirit. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't tried like a, an Irish meal, uh, do a Kentucky meal, which What's is the just Irish bourbon, mule? Irish whiskey. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there's never a had great a mule variation. Whiskey. Uh, actually uh, suggested first by an old patron uh, downtown when I used to work at Coles. Yeah. Where we used a, oh God, it was a, it was a gentian based, super savory, and I can't remember the name of the bottle now because it's a little, little obscure, but that made a really kind of almost dirty feet, but in a good way, mule. I loved that thing. Dirty feet, mule? Mm. In a good way. We all have things we're into. True. Gross. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Again, you do you. I'm gonna put all of these out. Hold on one second. So yeah, put them that all was out. our last one. This was yours. And those looked a lot better when they were full, though. Yeah, well, they, won't be, they won't be full for long. I can tell no, you. No, they much. will not. Um, I'd be offended if they something's were. Something's missing. Yeah, where's the uh, tall one? Where's the tequila sun? Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. There it is. I, I kind of like, got. Who stole it? I stole it. Hold on. Let's put this. I was in. enjoying it. All right. So if I had to pick one that was my favorite of the week, mm -hmm. I would say. La Rosa. Really? Ah. What? I paid her to do that. Thank you. No, you Mine's not. the best. I actually, <laughs> I, I gotta say, out of all of them, yours is uh, today my favorite. Well, thank you. You sound very well, you surprised know, with your own magical work. <laughs> you know what? The thing is that it's the most unusual, sure. Mm -hmm. you know, 
to be sure. Because, I mean, you've had variations on the other. Yeah. It, 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 it's hard pressed to find a tequila mar martini. You just don't see very many. That's true. Yeah. If I walked into a bar and I said, can I get a, um, can I get a martini? They'd probably be like, oh yeah, sure, okay, no. Tequila martini. But they'd be like, oh, oh, oh. I don't know. Yeah, it huh? depends on your bartender if they're a snob or not. True. They might be like, ooh, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Oh my God, we're gonna run with this. Oh my God, we're gonna run with this. <laughs> we're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna change our bar program. So, uh, <laughs> What was the first one? Just our classic margarita. Classic margarita with made tequila. with, uh, but I did use the reposado. True. Okay. Then we have our tequila sunrise. With the siete leguas. Okay. Then we the have- The pre patron. La Rosa. Mm-hmm. Also done with this one. Also done with the, whatever, that one, yep, that one. And then we have the classic uh, margarita with mezcal. Yeah. What would, what would be your favorite? Hmm. Apart from all of them, clearly. Well, I think what you're asking me is which order I would drink them in. No, that is not what I asked. Otherwise That's what I said, heard. What, otherwise, uh, I said, what order would you uh, drink so, them in? So what I heard oh, was yeah. I was drink my tequila sunrise so first because it's dry. So hearing. <laughs> Did I thought we explained so this, You would yeah. drink this one first? I would do that one first. Okay, then what would you go Drink for? it dry, then I'd do the traditional margarita. Yeah. Then the mezcal margarita. Yeah. Because I find that uh, the mezcal is such a big flavor that it's kind of hard to go back. It's kind of like eating something spicy and then eating something that's not. True. So eat, eat, you kind of go with the, yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. And then I would finish off with the El Rosa just because I can take my time, sip it. Sip it. Yeah. Everything else is going to melt. True. Well, I'll, I'll continue uh, drinking. I don't remember which one you were. Red. Mm. That's right. So, anyway, give me a couple empty glasses. Let's play here. What's going on? Oh, uh, we don't know. What do you want? A Collins glass? I got wine glass. I need a champagne flute. Uh, I need two champagne flutes for this kind of funk we're doing. This is getting crazy. Right? I know. Jeez. Right? What are we doing? What are we doing? Don't, I didn't we're, ask. We're, we're burning about fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so taste this one though. Yeah, let's put this out of the way so everyone can see what's going on. Oh, well, I'm using that one next. Oh, I want you to compare next. these two tequilas. Oh. oh, Both are lovely. Both are made ostensibly the same way. I can't say which one I like better, can I? You don't have to. Is that what I'm supposed to do? What am I supposed no, to do? No, not necessarily. I mean, a lot of these things are, this is good stuff. Yeah. This is also good stuff. Yeah. Why did I use this one in one drink and not this one? Yeah. Because, Why? taste that. Okay. So it's all about really knowing your tools. One of the things that gets frustrating okay. behind the bar is that you come in and you go, oh, my favorite whiskey is this, so that's what I'm gonna use to make my old fashioned, a shot of uh, a whiskey sour, okay. you know, all the, all the drinks made with the same thing. And it may be fantastic, but some things work better with others with certain drinks. Is that the other one now? This is the other one. Now okay. this, uh, the Fortaleza, is it's going to have a little bit more smells. vanilla. It's ha it's the reposado, really and it's also going to be almost creamy mouthfeel, like buttery, richer, rounder. Yeah. 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 So that will add more character Still to a margarita. Though. It's got a lot of the. Yeah, there's a lot of alcohol in straight in tequila. Uh, so the thing is, I want to do. <laughs> I I chose this one for the margarita because I like that little richer rounder. This is definitely drier. Right. Well, oh, remember, you, that's what you said was that tequila sunrise was dry. I'm figuring it all out, Max. Right. So oh. if I had used this one, there'd be a bit more of a... I'm growing. Um, like the creaminess would work against the citrus. Yeah. So, you know, it's just which tool do I want to use? We this, know these are both great. Which one do I want to use for this and why? It's true. Right? So... This just smells like classic tequila to me. Right. If that makes totally. any yeah, yeah. sense to anybody. No, it this is, it is a, a perfect example of classic tequila. A, t a tad of a little more character something yeah something added yeah. to it which is this one totally so you might have a preference for what you would drink straight yeah and then you might have another one for my margarita I don't know if I could drink and then if straight, I wanted to drink would, something else I was if I, I was gonna do a shot asleep. I'd do this one you I know would what I mean sleep if I drank this straight totally in about three minutes yeah, right. Yeah. And so, and so that way it, it allows me to pick my tools I love it because you know bars that What's I tend to food? 
You know? Thank you. So What's the right ingredient? Yeah. It's not that one thing's better than another. Exactly. Um, but I do feel that when you're doing stuff like the El Rosa, mm -hmm. that it, it's a little bit like cooking food, mm -hmm. like you just said. Absolutely. If you were making, which I love, Mexican food, yeah. but I'm having red sauce on it and beans and rice and tortilla and sour cream and cheese, yeah. am I really going to be able to tell the quality of the meat that was used? Mm as opposed to I'm grilling a steak. Yeah. Well, now it's really important, how are you gonna cook it? Mm -hmm. What temperature are you gonna use? How long are you gonna do it? What's the cut of the what meat? Spices? How are what you gonna season it? Absolutely. Or do you don't wanna cover it up and over season it? Mm -hmm. you know, so it really does depend on what you're going to do with each thing and how you wanna showcase it. I, I believe also like with, with entrees, right? With, mm -hmm. with cocktails, the same thing, you need a star. Who's the star of the dish? Who's the star of the cocktail, right? So here we have basically- The redhead. It's, what? What did you say? Aw, you're the star dish. Oh, me? Oh, thanks. Aw. Oh, come on, shine But right, you want something that's gonna shine and yeah, stand out. Yeah, you wanna have something that's still in the forefront, but it's also in, com and the company is basically the different, um, you know, other ingredients in there as well, so. Right. Max, it's always a pleasure to have you. Are you kicking me out? I'm kicking you out. I'm kicking you out. The bar is closed. No, jokes, no, joke. Jokes aside, I absolutely love having you here. Where's uh, your you... tequila sunrise situation? Mm, I think you stole all the drinks. Margarita. I'll take it. There you go. Please come Cheers. back again. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> thank you for making absolutely delicious drinks. <laughs> thank you everybody for tuning in. It was an absolute delight to have you here. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, and we will see each other again next week. Next week? You're doing this again? I do this all the time. Oh, this is my job. This is a sweet gig. Right? Uh-huh. I know. All right, thanks, everybody. I'm Tammy Harrison. This I'm is... I'm not. D. Max. Maxie in the house. Until next time. Cheerio, everybody.